Hi, this is David Kerner with Touchpoint Property Management. And in this video, I'm going to explain our application and background check process and requirements. So if you are listening to this video, you're most likely looking at this help article that has in print everything that I am going to be reviewing with you in this video. So you can go back and read it. All the web links are in there. So what we need from you, first off, to submit an application to rent one of our properties, please visit our website using the link below and search for the property that you're interested in and then click submit an application. So just as a review, you're going to go to touchpointpm.com and then you'll go to search rentals, which will bring you to a page where all of our rentals are. Find the rental that you're interested. This big orange box will allow you to schedule viewing automatically, but just below it, there's a link here that says submit application. And then you just got to follow the instructions and submit all of the information. Okay. So every occupant over 18 years of age must pay a $55 application fee and submit a formal application. This also includes any co-signers. You should get the co-signer submit an application from the beginning. It's very typical that we receive multiple applications on all of our properties as soon as they go on the market. And we look at the completed applications first. We cannot process incomplete applications. And what I mean by that is we cannot process applications that are missing supporting documentation that we'll be discussing shortly or missing co-signers and so forth, or missing um, people that are supposed to apply because they're 18 years uh, of age and older. So if we begin processing your application and we run our background check, then we cannot refund your application fee. But if we do not review your application because the property already rented, or we just have too many applications already, then we will refund your application fee to you. It'll go back to the account, the credit card or the bank card that you used. And this could take up to three business days to hit your account. So please give it three days. We will not begin processing your application until we have legible copies of the requested supporting documents below. Once all is collected, we can complete your application uh, within 24 to 48 hours. There's no guarantee that your application will be accepted because we have multiple applications. We have a scoring system and we have to choose the applicant who, who has the highest score in the system. This is a completely objective, unbiased scoring system that just goes based on your income verification, your credit score merits. So here's what we need from you. First, I'll repeat it again, we need to make sure that every occupant who's going to be living in the property 18 years or older applies along with any co-signers. You must do this from the beginning or it will hold up your application being looked at. We need government issued photo IDs, copy of government issued photo IDs for all occupants and co-signers over 18 years and older. So you could take a picture of it and upload it do a PDF. It has to be legible. Next, verifiable household income of three times the monthly rent. And this is how we verify your income. One of these may apply to you. If it doesn't apply to your situation, you could disregard it. So you want to provide copies of the following items below as it applies to you. If you are employed, we will require the last two most recent pay stubs. The pay stub should have your company name on it, the date, um, what you made that week or bi-weekly, and then what you made for the year. It has to be a real pay stub. If you're self-employed, obviously you're not going to have pay stubs, so you're going to show the last two most recent personal tax returns, not business tax returns, personal tax returns. We also need the last three most recent personal bank statements. So you can't skip years. It has to be the most recent. 
Um, you can't give us one. If we require two, if you give us one, we're going to reject it. So please get us everything we need. It'll allow us to process your application faster. Now, if you are employed, but you also are self-employed because you have two sources of income, you wanna provide all of the items listed above that I just mentioned. If, you're, if your income is coming from other income sources such as social security, investment funds, retirement funds, pension or alimony, please provide documented proof, legible proof of such income. If there's a job relocation, uh, we need to verify this. So if you're moving to North Carolina and you're going to be transferred by your current employer, um, we're going to require certain documentation, which is listed in this article. And that also goes for if you're relocating to the Charlotte area, in North Carolina, and you receive the job offer from your current employer. So look in this document to see what items we need from you in regards to that. Now, to verify your resident history, we want to verify your um, good standing and references from your previous or current residence right now. So if you are currently renting or you just moved out of a rental property, so if, uh, over the last year, we need for you to provide rental history information, which must include the previous landlord or property manager's name, phone number, an email address, we will be reaching out to them and we will verify that they are actually a landlord or the uh, property manager. We're just gonna ask them some questions to verify, um, re you know, rent being paid and property being taken care of. Now, if you did not rent previously and you owned a property, whether you still own it or you just sold it, so what we'll need in the last year, what we'll need from you is to provide ownership documents um, which should include something to the effect of uh, your property address and your name on the document. So, for example, a copy of a deed, a tax record, or a closing statement. If you're in the military and you were living in military housing, we need proof of military service in the last year, if applicable. If you cannot verify any of the above, um, there is an automatic a double security deposit that we will charge. So that would be equal to two months rent. Um, and this is just simply because we have to mitigate any possible risks of you not having any rental history that we can verify. Now, the good thing is we do have a um, zero security deposit program for um, a, approved applicants where they can not have to pay their security deposits upfront before moving, but instead they can subscribe to a third party company called Obligo and you can make monthly installments each month, small monthly installments, which will satisfy your security deposit uh, payment. For a lot of people that's really good because you can use that security deposit money for moving expenses or to pay your first month's rent. Moving along here, uh, petscreening.com report. Uh, PetScreening.com is a third-party website which verifies information if you have pets, service animal, or you don't have pets. You need to go to this website for everything that I'm going to list here. So if you claim that you do or do not have pets or service animals, you need to go to PetScreening.com. Um, if, well, excuse me, let me back up. You first need to check the property's advertisement on our website very carefully to confirm that you're not applying to a property that doesn't allow pets. Number two, as I mentioned, we use a third-party pet screening service. Go to the website link that I listed below and you can um, apply for your report, whether you have a pet or you don't. If you do not have a pet or an animal, you still must go to the website below and choose no pets or animals. That's the option you want to choose. They will give you what's called a no pet affidavit letter. You must provide that to us. Um, so here's the website right here, touchpoint.petscreening.com. And follow the steps to de declare no pets or animals. Yes, we have household pets. 
or yes, we have assistant animals. Uh, they will verify if your assistant animal is actually a valid assistant animal. This pet screening report, uh, this report, they should send you an email or us an email verifying the results and documenting everything. Um, so whatever you get from them, provide to us. This pet screening report, um, if, if you don't end up renting our property, most property management companies use pet screening. So these port reports are transferable to most other properties out there. Here's a list of the fees that pet screening charges um, for your first pet, if you have an additional pet. If you have um, a service or companion animal, they don't charge you anything. And if you do not have a pet, they do not charge you anything. So what I like to do now is go over the scoring criteria. Just um, this doesn't go into everything, but this is just a gist that will help you realize if it makes sense for you to apply to one of our properties or not. So one of the things that we're going to look at is your FICO credit score. If you have multiple applicants in the property, everybody applies, we're going to get an um, a average of everybody's FICO score. And that's what we're going to grade um, on the application. So here is a list of what the scores represent and what would be an automatic denial. And then as far as criminal background, we do run a criminal background check. Um, there are certain criminal um, records that we just do not accept and others that, that um, well, this is going to list what is not accepted. So take a look at this. It's on this document here. We're going to do an eviction check, a bankruptcy and a foreclosure check to see if you've had any records of that in the last one to seven years. It doesn't necessarily mean it's an automatic denial, but we do have mitigation fees, risk mitigation fees, if you do have any of those on your records. We're going to check to see if you have any accounts in collection, whether it be a third party vendor, your cell phone company, utility company, or even your last property manager when you moved out, if you have any uh, accounts that are not paid off. If you, we do find one on the credit report, we'll give you an opportunity to pay that off show us proof that you paid it off, and then we won't count that against you. We're also going to look on your credit report to see if you've had any late payments or return checks. Um, there's a certain amount that are okay, but if you go over a certain amount that's listed here, it's, it's called, it's, it could be an automatic denial. Also, we're looking for landlord disputes or civil judgments. This would be, for an example, if on your way out of a rental property, a landlord filed a dispute or civil judgment against you at the courthouse for a number of reasons, could be not paying rent, damaging the property, um, not following the terms of the lease. That, that all will show up on your background check. Okay. And certain items in regards to that could be an automatic denial. Now below here is a disclosure to prospective tenants and applicants, our lease related fees from application to the time of move out. So during the during the application process, there are some fees. During the move-in process, there could be some fees. And during the lease, there could be monthly or annual fees. This is a list of the, the fees that I'm discussing here, just so you know. Um, one particular item here, this $34 per month resident benefit package. Well, if you are approved for our properties, we do require um, that you have renter's insurance. This resident benefit package will provide you renter's insurance above and beyond what most renter's insurance companies provide. In addition, it covers other amenities and other uh, things to help you comply with your lease. For example, having HVAC filters mailed to your house every month. So you can look over all these items here is pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you have reviewed this video and these documents and you still have questions, we want to be here for you to answer them. So our phone lines, uh, just because of our high volume of calls, it is hard to get to every call and respond to every call uh, voicemail as quickly as we would like. It's just physically impossible. The hundreds of calls that we get. However, it is a lot easier for us to respond to email. Plus, we can track 
our responses and make sure we're responding in a timely fashion. Here's our email address right here. It's support at touchpointpm.com. So if this article was not able to help you and you're not able to email your question to us and you would like to schedule a call with one of our application processors because you have a special question or something you need explained, that is okay. As long as you've read over all this information and helped yourself to some of this information we provided, there is a link here where you can click a, a uh, um, to schedule a 15 minute call. Why do we schedule calls? We want to avoid phone tag. We want to avoid you calling us and us being on the other line and then us calling you back and you being on the other line or at work. So this will be a scheduled call, a 15 minute call. Please come to the call with all your questions and we will answer them all for you. We want to try to make this process as good as possible for you. Um, I know it's, you know, it's, it's not always easy to move and we want to try to make this as good as possible for you. So thanks for watching this video and thank you in advance for reading over this document and helping yourself to some of the answers. Thanks and good luck.